Welcome back to the Scottabyte channel and this is Scott. So I wanted to go ahead and make this short video today because it might be valuable to some people who may experience this problem. I was gone yesterday out of the house for a while and what I experienced was actually kind of interesting. So basically what had happened was that if you were to look at my UDM Pro here, my UDM Pro itself was missing from my devices list. And this was kind of odd because I'd never had that happen in seven years of running a UDM Pro. And that had the side effect of when I would go over to my settings, a lot of these things were grayed out. And in fact, when I returned to the main dashboard, the main dashboard would report that I could not manage the network because I had no gateway joined to my network, which was kind of interesting. And that sort of led me to log in to the UDM Pro with SSH. And then once I logged in, I started looking around at some things. Notably, as I pointed out in the last video, you have the listing of the various systemd services that are running that you can perform various actions on. So my UDM Pro basically stopped or started recording that several of my devices were offline when in fact I didn't have several devices offline and all the devices that you see listed here were in fact online in green. The one notable thing was the fact that the Scott and Cat, which is the UDM Pro, was itself missing. And so it was no longer listed as a device and it was no longer available. And that had the effect of basically not being able to manage my network. And it, if you looked at it a little bit more closely, I could get to all the pages and settings, but essentially my device was read only. So after a lot of research, I discovered that my network controller was taking forever to start and that the logs for the system D service for the Mongo database had many errors indicating that the database itself was corrupted. So here's the Mongo DB service. And I did a video previously where I discussed a little bit about it. The Mongo DB service is the backing service that supports the unify dot service and the unify dot service is your network controller. And so for as long as I've known, Ubiquity has used the MongoDB service all the way back in the self-hosted controller days, and then after that in the cloud key days, and they still do. So the first thing that I decided to do was restore from a recent backup I had on my UDM Pro, but that didn't fix the problem. And so I tried both a network backup or a network restore, I should say, and also a full Unify OS restoration, and the problem still persisted. I still had no UDM Pro device showing up. And keep in mind, I hadn't done anything. I was out of the house. Um, the network was on autopilot, so to speak. So then having nothing else to do, I opted to do a factory reset and realized that at this point I was sweating given the fact that I had five switches, three access points, six VLANs, three VPN servers, and more than 150 DHCP address reservations, and then a whole boatload of firewall policies. So kind of as a result, I opted for a very scary factory reset. 
But the interesting part is that the factory reset process has changed since the last time that I used it, which was maybe five years ago. And I only really had one occasion to do that factory reset five years ago. So I went into my computer room and I pulled the fiber downlink from my UDM Pro to my switches. And I connected a laptop to one of the UDM Pro's eight ports and I initiated the factory reset. So you might wanna know why did I pull the downlink to the switches? And that was because I knew that after a factory reset that the UDM Pro would switch from my network address range of 172.16.0.0 to the default network address range of 192.168.1.0. And I really didn't want DHCP to start blowing addresses in that range out to my various devices. So my first factory reset, I opted to create a local console without the Unify Cloud. And the reason is that I knew that my backups on USB sticks had everything I needed. And despite the fact that the last backup I made was a month ago, I was pretty confident that it was gonna have more or less everything that I was going to require. So this failed first because the factory reset version of Unify OS was not at the latest Unify OS and it didn't match my backup. And so when I tried to do the restoration, it was refused because it was not at the latest version. So I thought, no problem, I'll go ahead and update Unify OS, which updated the Unify network. And now I thought we were basically cooking with gas. Unfortunately, after I upgraded it, the import was refused because the owner of the backup differed from the local user account that I had just created because I decided to make the UDM Pro essentially a local device, knowing that when I restored my backup, everything would be fine. It turns out that that philosophy was pretty much fundamentally flawed. So now it's time for a second factory reset. So the factory reset changed from the last time I did it about five years ago in that it gave me an option to log into the Ubiquity Cloud account that I had. And so I did that. And the difference is that this time when I logged into the Ubiquity Cloud from the setup process, it immediately gave me an option to restore a Unify Cloud backup that had apparently been made at 0100 hours and when I started on that, it was 2100 hours. So we're talking 20 hours later, making that a really recent backup and having all the configuration changes I had made. So I didn't need to use my one month old backup that I had on the USB sticks. So the Unify OS backup contains everything for the network my protect application, talk, and access, although I'm not a user of access. And I knew that the UDM Pro doing weekly Unify OS backups, and I assumed that that was the latest backup that I was going to be able to get. And I also did the same for the network controller backups. And I also knew that these weekly backups were pushed to the cloud but what I didn't know or realize is that somehow the system pushed a complete Unify back up to the cloud 20 hours later or, or 20 hours earlier to when I had this problem. And this turned out to be a godsend since my last manual backup I downloaded was that one month old backup that I pointed out. And I still don't necessarily understand how that backup was created, but I was really thankful. And so those weekly backups I mentioned earlier, well, those were on the UDM Pro file system and 
they got wiped out during the factory reset. So the only one I really had was the one month old backup that I had deliberately downloaded. So all I can say about that is my bad. So let's go back to the original problem. After a whole lot of command line investigation in Unify OS on the UDM Pro, the whole reason for this restore was that I had a corrupted MongoDB database which had effectively unadopted the UDM Pro from itself. And although the network was running, that is the network controller program was running, everything in the interface that would allow me to make any modifications or changes, and I'm kind of talking about the things in the settings area, were basically read-only. So the next step that I did was to create a new Mongo database from the CLI. And this is what I actually did prior to that second um, factory reset that I talked about. And so I had tried to import that backup and that worked fine, but it didn't correct the problem. And that's what led me to do the factory resets. So you might ask, well, why didn't the import to the new database that I created work? And as it turns out, the keys used to make the UDM Pro a part of the configuration are only created when Unify OS is initially configured. So take that to mean initial setup or what you have happen after you do that global factory reset. And apparently these keys are not a part of the backup that you take for Unify OS. And so my restores did no good at all because they're not part of the backup. So think of those keys sort of as a fingerprint for a particular device. And that's kind of the reason why they're not part of the backup. In any event, I was able to do this cloud restore from 0, 0100 hours on the same day, only 20 hours later after I started battling this and the restore of the UDM Pro rebooted and it was now again at the 172.16.0.0 network which was my network all along and also the factory reset gives you the option to not erase the hard drive that the UDM Pro uses for Unify Protect and also Unify Talk and my voice recordings for Unify Talk. So I opted not to override that drive or overwrite that drive, which is one of the things that you have an option for during factory reset. And so after the factory reset and the restore, the entire configuration, including all of my video recordings, my motion events, and my Unify Talk call logs and recordings were also completely restored. And I was not even aware of this so-called extra cloud backup that had occurred 20 hours later. And it's still a mystery to me. And maybe one of my subscribers here can let me know where exactly that comes from because it certainly wasn't any setting on my behalf, but it saved my life completely and I'm eternally grateful. So in the seven years that I've owned my UDM Pro, I've done a restore only once previously, and this is the first time I had to go as far as doing a factory reset. And all I can say to Ubiquity is bravo. Good job, guys, and a big thumbs up to you. They've designed a superior product, and on a side note, I still hate MongoDB is basically, <laughs> yes, of course, I have it, but it's hard to love MongoDB in my opinion, and part of the reason for that is because of these issues that I have encountered with it. And so the grief it's caused me over the years on my self-hosted network controller and then my cloud key and finally now on the UDM Pro and also on Rocket Chat because if you've watched my Rocket Chat videos, you know that I've experienced more than a couple of problems with MongoDB on Rocket Chat, I've learned that MongoDB is fragile at the very least. It's a great database, don't get me wrong, 
but when it breaks, it breaks really bad. So I can report that everything is as it was, and I still don't know why the UDM Pro unadopted itself from my network when I wasn't even at home. And I may never know, but I hope that this helps someone else. So the bottom line is, do plenty of backups and never be afraid to dig for a solution. Anyway, that's it for today. Please subscribe and like to the channel and don't forget to hit your notification bell and we'll see you next time.